was on. Yeah. And that's what we were executing. Yeah. This is only coming back because of realization once we got to the end of the project would be my way of feeling it. Thank you. So from what I understand, there hasn't been any faults made. It's just we just moved the, the goalposts around to create a little bit of space <laughs> between the 50 metre line and the and the yep. centre square. Yep. Okay. Now I've got to be careful here. You got a question, yes, Councillor? Yes. No, Councillor Hayley got his hand up. You got a question, or are you debating, sir? Oh, I just want to finish off what I was saying. Is that Let's go back a step and say, well, even though the oval is correct as it is at the moment, it's if someone's had a bubble thought and thought, well, we need to change the playing area to a slight degree, well, so what? Because if you go to another oval, I would say it would be different again. Mm -hmm. So why spend seventy odd thousand dollars to order? make the alterations to just increase the centre playing area. I don't get it. Thank you. Councillor Barrett. Question, question I've got uh, relates to the allocation of funds for this project and to come from the Down to Club Room and Change Room project. Is there, will there be any push once that project gets up and underway to recoup that money? Uh, um, because they're short, because they can't do what they want to do, because we've taken 70000 from them to prop up this particular project. Through you, Mr Mayor, yep. that's entirely uh, my recommendation in that we are trying to work within a bottom line for that facility, and um, I can't guarantee that, but that will be what we'll certainly be aiming for, and that keeps within the bounds of what has happened in other, other areas. Mm -hmm. Um, we're weighing up contributions of different clubs as well. Other than that, um, yes, I can argue you, you are right that we're just kicking the issue down the camp, down the road. But um, I'm trying my best to work within the allocations that are, that are available. Mm. Any further questions? Councillor Angus. Yes, I get a little bit annoyed at the preciousness of all the user groups, you know, and we, we're getting now down to 450 millimetres between one line and another, and it becomes non-compliant. Um, no. You know, it's a game of football, for goodness sake. Um, and I believe we have a duty to do things correctly and properly and to the best of our ability. If $76,000 is going to fix this for all time, I will support the motion. If we're going to be ripping out the curbing and changing the goalposts again, in you know, I, I just think the notion of, of having to have AFL goalposts is how bloody precious can you get? But if that's the way they want to play and they do the work themselves, then I suppose that's, that's fine. Except that we are carrying the cost of putting in the foundations and things. Um, and it, it almost occurs to me that maybe the Tanunda Oval was not fit for purpose uh, in the first instance. But we've gone down this track so far, we, we really don't want to turn back. So I just want an assurance that this is the last 76 we need to pay uh, for this particular part of the project. Mm. Thank you. Do you want me to answer that? Yeah, please. Through you, Mr Mayor, Councillor Angus. No, I can't give you that because I don't know what next request is going to come. Mm. Okay. Any further questions, comments? Mm. Not, um, Councillor DeVries, I'll let you close the debate. Mm. Oh, hang on, hang on. Uh, I'd like to speak now. <laughs> uh, sorry. Um, I don't think we've had quite a fulsome debate yet. We've had... Um, a lot of questions I, here. I did ask. <laughs> <laughs> For questions. Um, I am mixed on this one here. I want to make sure that when we do a job, we do it properly. And if that's going to cost us a bit more to do it properly, then so be it. Um, in this instance, I find it particularly frustrating 
that we're being asked to spend this money on less than half a metre extra turf. Um, for some reason, it's an issue now. It hasn't been an issue for years. They've been playing footy on this over for years, and that less than half a metre has not been an issue. Now, we've put significant money, time and resources into upgrading this park, and I understand, you know, things happen along the way and perhaps things um, don't go to plan or little things are missed, but this is a significant amount of money we're talking about here for less than half a metre of length on an oval that is fit for purpose, that meets the standards it needed to meet. Um, to my mind, that money could be better spent elsewhere. Um, there are a lot of other little projects around the place that would really benefit from that money. Um, and as has been raised, you know, what does this then mean for the um, change rooms down, down the track? All too often with this project, we're finding that um, individual parts of the project are running over budget, we're having to allocate more funds. So at this point, we're being asked to take money from a project that we haven't yet done, put it into a project that is completed to the standard we expected it to be completed to, that meets every requirement um, that we expected of it. So it just doesn't make sense. This is a significant amount of money. I mean, if I had that amount of money in the bank, well, I'd be happy. I've got so much stuff I could get done. And I can only see that ratepayers are going to look at this the same way. This is a lot of money for not much. It doesn't, you know, impact anything at the end of the day. It doesn't impact our ability to host AFL or Sandfield games. Um, and, you know, I haven't played footy, not since I was at primary school, but every oval is different, you know, whether it's undulations in the turf or less than half a metre in the width or length of the oval. Really, at the end of the day, is it worth this money? I, I don't believe it is. Um, before I go back to Councillor DeVries, Councillor Johnson, you haven't spoken. No, I'd just like to seek a clarification that we're allocating, reallocating funds from one area of the budget to another and that we'll, there'll be some pressure to value manage the remaining project. Is that correct? Great. Thank you. It's not money that's coming out of ratepayers money, it's coming out of already allocated funds. It is right. Which is ratepayers money. Yeah, They're already allocated funds. It's not taking extra money. Thank you. Not yet. Okay. Mm. Nothing. Mm. Councillor. <clears throat> just like to say, I am going to vote against this motion. I think that the variation that has been talked about is acceptable in my mind. It says that um, different lengths and widths which provide variation and is unique and is acceptable at an AFL level. And to me, I think uniqueness is a good thing. So, um, And I think if the goalposts need to be changed for an AFL game... Um, anyway, this is really for uh, you know 450 mil. I'm a bit, I'm a bit concerned that 76 thousand dollars could be used more effectively somewhere else. We have often spoken about the fact that we need to disperse funds to other things. This is sports again. I mean, I've said it before. My kids are not sporty. They are musicians. They are artists. And my children will never see. The, there is a lot more people in the valley that might benefit from that seventy-six thousand besides sports. Not that I don't want to do a good job, but this is within budget. So, um, within um, what the the acceptable areas or the acceptable sort of restrictions, so or whatever needs to be done. So I will be voting against it because I feel that we could spend that money better in another area. Thank you. Councillor Booth, please. Can I ask a question, Mayor? Yes. So I should have asked this before. So, um, Ms Thomas, when the club has been asked to make contributions or has offered to make contributions to this project so far, I think the last one was actually a financial contribution towards the lights, have those those contributions come to fruition? For you, Mayor, the answer is no. But I have been working with them very closely to try and find other ways where and they could make that contribution. So through the in-kind work that they've done for the oval widening, so they did um, elements of that work. Uh, they also uh, provided me fence. Um, we're working with them so they can actually track their in-kind work in the same way that we've done for other projects, including the Angus Red Park. Um, but in terms of the cash contribution, they've made 10 grand worth of cash contribution to them. Thank you. Excuse me, Mayor. Yep. I seconded the motion to get it onto the floor. Can I vote against it? You can do anything I you like. Once I call for the vote. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 
Um, no further comment. Like you close the uh, debate, Councillor De Vries. Yeah, I hope you hear me through before you change your mind, Tony. Um, the problem is that when we went into this, the reason why we actually entered into the big project was because the Tanunda Football Club and the Tanunda um, Cricket Club actually wanted to do this project right from the get-go. They wanted to have AFL and, and soccer football, uh, football and cricket at the Tanunda Oval. The lights went in for that purpose. The agreement was that in order to have AFL standard football, that the, the, the ground would have to be extended from three metre runoff to five metre runoff all the way around. That actually hasn't happened. What we've got is we've, we've extended the width but not the length. So in, in effect, when you're saying they're asking for a longer oval, no, they're not. They're asking for the length of the oval to remain what it always was. By not doing this, we'll actually be shortening the length of the oval, and that's what they're concerned about. Now, we can go into who screwed this up and so forth, but the club brought this to our attention back in, uh, before the, every, all the foundations were poured, back in, um, the, the, their claim was that they did this back in um, uh, in uh, December, and they asked to, to hold off so that we could get this problem sorted, but we went ahead with it anyway. I'm trying to solve a, a mess. Now, what we've created here, and I don't want to go into where the problems lay because it's happened. But we're now in a situation where this council is about to spend a considerable amount of money removing a significant amount of trees, changing the whole aspect of this ground, and you're going to have the very user groups that we're doing this for the benefit of going to be absolutely furious, and we're going to be the villains. We're going to spend all this money, and far from being grateful, they're going to be furious with this. Now, I, don't, I think that is the worst of all possible outcomes. The amount of money that we're spending here, yes, it's considerable, but it's the same sort of thing as, like, for example, when we spent $50,000 because somebody was complaining about noise at the end of, the, of, of a road. We will spend money for all sorts of reasons, but this is going to absolutely um, infuriate all of the user groups in this area, and I just do not want to see that be the outcome of all of the work that we've done. I think this would be an absolute own goal. We can play uh, football on that ground now without the, without any problems if we decide not to worry about SA NFL and um, and soccer games. It's fine because, as Councillor Habeck has pointed out, um, at the moment uh, there's a four metre runoff in the southern end, and that's absolutely fine because we only need three metres for local football. Three metres is still fine. If we were only worrying about three metre football, uh, th uh, local football, none of this would be an issue. But then we never went, it would have gone down this path in the first place. We didn't put those lights in for local football. We didn't put the extension of the grounds and ripping out, um, I'd say, half the trees, probably more like three-quarters of the trees in Tanunda at the Tanunda ground for local football. It was to see, have a much bigger picture. And what the club is concerned about is that when we are um, having games which potentially could be televised, games which are going to attract people to this area, we're going to have the ground where the centre square and the 50 metre arcs are virtually going to be touching. And they are very concerned about that and they think that will be incredibly <coughs> unprofessional and that, the, and that will reflect poorly on them and poorly on the Barossa. Now, we can get into the blame game of how we got there and whose stuff up it is. And, so, and I promise you, if we do not support this, that blame game will absolutely be featured on the front page of the paper for the next three months. And we better be sure that we're absolutely squeaky clean on this one because I actually think that there's been a little bit of fault all around. Now, again, I want to see this mess solved. I do not believe the amount of money is a significant amount. The, uh, and I do believe, for, for, given that what we're trying to resolve is a result of this. Um, but this is an issue. And to just say, oh, no, it's fine, we've, we've satisfied. No, we didn't. We promised that we would extend the ground by five metres all the way around. That isn't going to be the case. We're going to shorten the length of the ground and we will be owning that, that decision. So I do hope you support this, this um, and, uh, yeah, I hope that we can then, and as I said, I will be definitely putting my hand up to be on that represent, representation group so that we can make sure that we don't have mistakes like this going forward. Thank you. <coughs> Loses the debate. The, um, the recommendation is now the motion for... So all those in favour... Those against? I'm going to call for a division, Your Worship. The motion is lost. All those who voted for, please stand. Councillor Angus. Councillor Boothby. Councillor De Vries. 
Councillor Johnston. For those still seating, we voted against. Councillor Hearn, Councillor Barrett, Councillor Habeck, Councillor Schilling, Councillor Wee Smith, and Councillor Troop. Thank you. Seated. Okay. Uh, the motion that, that was put has been lost. Um, and that's it. That's it. We'll move to the uh, next item on page 94. 7.2.5, which is the Chananda Recreational Park Advisory Committee. Move Councillor DeVries. Move Councillor Boothby. Seconded Councillor Angus, and Councillor DeVries has already stated that he's, Thank you. He's, he's happy to go on that committee. Either one wish to speak? Uh, I think Councillor DeVries has shown his passion today for Tanunda Rec Park and obviously has some established relationships with different user groups. Um, obviously, also a very long history on council and understands the history of um, council's interaction with the park and its users, so it makes sense there. Yeah. Thank you. Councillor Angus? No, thank you. Okay. All those in favour? It's carried. Thanks, Danny. Page 96 which is uh, 7.2.6, the Prudential Management Report, the big project update on page 96. Any questions? Move the recommendation. Move ready. Councillor DeVries, seconded Councillor Johnston. Either one wish to speak? No. Any further no. comments? All those in favour? Carried. Next item is 7.2.7, .7, which is the Angerston Dump request for purchase on page 143. A recommendation there. Move Councillor Angus. Seconded yeah. Councillor Wiesel. Oh, no question. <laughs> question, okay, I'll get a seconder. Councillor Boothby. Either one wish to speak? Uh, I just concur with the report. It's too big a risk. To, um, that's all I need to say. Um, Councillor Wee Smith. Question slash comment. I'd like to see this brought to a workshop just um, for myself. I'm not particularly familiar with the conditions that lie around this piece of land. Um, and I think it would probably be to the benefit of the rest of the elected member body, um, particularly those newer to council, just to be familiarised with it. Um, don't have an issue with the recommendation. I'd just like to know a little bit more going forward. Councillor DeVries. Yeah, the reason why we uh, currently send all our rubbish out of the Brosser is because this land was uh, discovered to be a problem um, and that we were actually told that in, in, unless we uh, closed it, and I think we were given a time limit, you remember, Your Worship, if, if we didn't close it within a certain amount of time, we would be required to... Um, you know, fix the, fix the land up at significant cost. Um, so it's basically just sitting there as a, you know, um, yeah, there's no way that we could pass this land on in its current state. And, uh, and as a result of that, I think it's just best left alone. Just further to that, I understand that part of it. I think I'm looking more at the legislation and the land management agreement we've got over it. I think it would benefit us all to be familiarised with that. Obviously, the land's unusable at this point, but yeah, I think there's a bit more to it. So. No, yeah, and look, I'm very familiar with the closure of the process because back then there was going to be a new legislation that was about to be passed, and many local councils promptly closed a lot of their landfills because the requirements were going to be extraordinary and the ongoing monitoring was going to be a significant cost. Mm. So we, we did a closure plan, which was under the previous legislative requirements, but now it's a different ballgame. But I'm going to throw to the CEO now, because I think yeah. um, there is some risk involved. 
through there, Lane. I think what we're being asked is a general briefing on how environmental law works. Mm. Um, Thank you. But yes, um, it, it <coughs> fundamentally comes down to you can't, under new law, well, actually, the chart's past the end of the decade, I guess. Um, you, you can't contract out by selling the land or alienating the mm. land from being a pollution of that land. Mm. That's the fundamental thing. Mm. Councillor Johnston. Um, in addition to that question, I'm just curious to know whether, given what was done there, would it be an asset at some time in the future? We might need to mine it. Just a small throwaway comment. It's just, just a thought. I wonder what got dumped there. And, um, is it likely to be an asset in the future that we shouldn't really alienate? Yeah, you never want to dig up what's been buried. <laughs> <laughs> might find oil. <laughs> Because you, <laughs> we can brief you on that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we can talk about that. Sorry. Councillor Barrett. No? No. Oh, sorry. Keep scratching your uh, mask. It was your morning. Um, yes. That, uh, that dump could make a good gas deposit. Uh, depends what's in it. It's a very small dump area. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, there, no, there wouldn't. No, you wouldn't get any return from it. Who, who moved that one? Uh, yeah, Councillor Ab Councillor Angus. Councillor Angus, do you wish to close the debate on it? No, thank you, Mayor. Save and accept to say that Councillor Westsmith's um, request for further information is quite justified. I do have the sort of knowledge from the previous years to know that we're better off to leave it alone. Um, I, yeah, I hope you support the motion. Good grazing, Paddy. Mm. Yeah. And that's even problematic, Mr. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's why I'd like to know yeah. some more. Yeah. The lead yeah. 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 I'm not too certain about that, but anyway. <laughs> All right, I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Carry. Seven point four point one is the Santos Tour Down Under twenty twenty three expression of interest. On page 155, now there's a whole number of... I'd like to move B, Your Worship, and finish at Williamstown. Can I ask a question first? Yeah, yep. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask the same question I ask every year on this one. We've got a good snapshot here on the economic benefits to South Australia. Um, I'm still interested in knowing exactly what the regional benefits are um, to the Barossa when we support this and it's probably a fruitless quest once again but um, you know there's a lot of stats put forward there about social media reach engagement audience etc but I'd like to know how does this actually benefit us on a local level what sort of money is it putting into our mm. local economy well you've asked the question I haven't got the answer I'm asking it yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, I'd like to second the motion but okay. just to question whether or not we would consider having a start and a finish that's all just to get a sense of, I mean, I know it's difficult here, but um, I note that in the past, so so just sort of... Well, do you want me to flesh out the motion? Well, I just of... want one one thing to be made uh, clear, that the eyeballs that we get from having TV cameras wandering around the Bronx is probably worth about $25 million of that. You don't need to be assessed. So just the leverage that you get out of having a day's TV exposure in the Brosses is un incalculable in, in, on Eurovision, uh, Eurosport in Europe. So what I'm, I'm kind of clear, trying to understand is if you only have a finish in Williamstown, there is a risk that we won't get that exposure. That's all. Um, I have to finish, if I speak to the motion... Yeah, yeah, yeah look, all we, of those, we, yeah. we need to tidy up the motion yeah, first. OK, yeah. so the reason I want to move uh, the... Having the start, sorry, the finish, and with finishing at uh, Williamstown is that um, on most matters uh, to do with cycling, I naturally uh, spoke to His Worship because he's a keen cyclist and he's also uh, um, very well connected with Stuart O'Grady, who is the, the, the person who decides the course structures. And their conversations have indicated that um, they would like to see, um, or rather, that uh, Stuart was talking about actually starting somewhere like in Norwood and then coming up to the valley and then doing loops around the Williamstown 
um, and uh, Lindock area, and that we've seen that happen many times, and is very very successful. This is an expression of interest, and if and if he was to come back and say, look, we'd like to just have the whole thing begin and end at Williamstown, or start at Lindock and end at Williamstown, or whatever, yeah, absolutely. Then you know, we'd, I'd be happy to modify it. But um, given that that's what they're looking at anyway, uh, given that that would then give us the biggest bang for the buck, um, given all of the support that we've been doing with this, um, and that. The browser has spent considerable sums of money uh, on bike paths uh, and continues to do so and is trying to make ourselves the home of recreational cycling for the state or one of the main destinations for that. To not support Tour Down Under, I think, would send a very mixed signal. And um, uh, and I believe that this is a, a particular benefit to the southern end. Um, the northern end of the browser has a lot of things which it does very, very well. Um, but I think we'd be lying if we said that there... There aren't as many sort of um, street events uh, at the southern end, and this is one that I know that the um, Southern Barossa Alliance is very proud of, uh, one that they do exceedingly well. Uh, if it was up to me, even though I'm, I'm a resident of Sananda, I would love to see all of them down at that end because I think they just do it so well. And so for that reason, I, that's why I'm suggesting Williamstown as the town. OK, you moved it, but I understand, Councillor Johnson, you, you were I seconded. Seconded, yeah. I, I just wanted to make but, sure but, we understand but, but what you But just to clarify, so he, hearing what you're saying, Councillor Rees, it, it could well be A and B, start and finish? No, I, I, I'm suggesting B, finish. but if you yeah. if, if you want to, somebody wants to uh, change that to A, I'm happy to, to have that, but... Based on the conversations that yeah, we've had, I believe B right, is yeah, an, expression of <coughs> an expression of interest. I would start with B, and yeah, then if right. Tour Down Under was to come back to us and say, would you be interested in having the entire thing, then I think the council should definitely give that consideration, but I'm not proposing that at this stage. Mm. Mm, all right. OK, so it's B and William Sound, finish. I have a question. Why would we not consider the women's, one of the women's races as well? Absolutely. Yep. Adding to that, just the paracycling as well, just I think that that yeah, would be great. Yeah, stick with the debating processes. Yeah. I, Sorry. That might actually really help the conversation. Yeah, no, fair <laughs> enough. It we, 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 we should have been a workshop. It should have been a workshop. If the, look, if the Chamber wants Instead to modify it. the motion, I would like I'm, to. I'm happy to add G, H and... Oh, I was going so to happy, happy amend to do the motion. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no I'm happy to change, add those in. Yeah, yeah look, uh, this, is gonna this all gets a bit muddled mm. and it's probably better to say you want to put an expression of interest to be involved mm. in whatever areas that they that, that, that oh, we can, you know. But anyway, you've, you've covered yeah. that motion now, so we've got that clear. So B. Okay. B, G, H and I with the finish at Williamstown. Yeah, and through you, Mr. Mayor, you're aware that the budget does not have that level of funding. They're all new. Yeah, yeah this the women's uh, is a, is is a, well, we'll it, it, it has a cost associated with it. It has a cost associated because they're different days, different. Yeah. Just making there sure is no budget. Clear. We haven't we done haven't next year's budget, budget yet. For I'm, I'm from three, three years, ma'am. We have a budget for the purposes of running the event once. Not it's four events. It's an expression of interest. And, correct. <laughs> and you can back out. I'm just giving you that heads yeah, up. No, and that's just what I was going <laughs> to highlight. If, if they come back with the whole works and jerks, then we, we can then decide well. where we're at. In the next budget. <laughs> or the current budget. Okay. Have we got the motion? <laughs> B, G, H, yeah. I. At request of the town, the finish at Williamstown. That's it. Okay, all clear? Yes. I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Carried. Yes. Thank you. Move the motion. Next one. Oh, oh. 7.4.2, page 174. Which one do you want to move? 174. Eight, one or two? Yeah. One. Okay. Clearly. <laughs> so, uh, Councillor Louise Smith, you're moving uh, continue the support. support. Yep. 
for a further 12 months. Yep. Moved Councillor Wee Smith, seconded Councillor Johnston. Speak. Um, yeah, this is a no brainer. I don't know why we wouldn't support this one. Um, I just wanted to acknowledge the work of Ruby Stobart and Rachel Bornack with the Kind Harder Kitchen. They've contributed so much to our community in the past few years since they started this up um, and even through COVID. And I know it's been tough for them to do um, some of their cook ups through COVID. And it's not only Ruby and Rachel, it's all the people in the community, those who go and volunteer in the kitchen to help cook up these meals, deliver the meals, um, those who donate produce from their backyards, whatever it may be, whatever people can donate to it. <laughs> this is a real community effort. Um, and, yeah, as I said, it's a no-brainer. I don't know why we wouldn't support something like this. Councillor Johnson? Uh, no, I think um, I endorse uh, Councillor Wilson's. And, and the meals are distributed free of charge, which is... It's not a money raising no, exercise. Not at all. Okay. Any further comments? All those in favour? Carried. Item seven point four point three on page one seventy eight, which is the Mount Pleasant Progress Association request for a waiver of a license agreement fees on page one seventy eight. Um, Councillor Wee Smith. Um, Before you start, Mayor. <laughs> just, um, thank you. Yeah. The, uh, as alluded to in the report, well, I've got a conflict before we start any discussion on this, so I'll just highlight that. And uh, as the CEO has put in his report, so I will exit the chamber on this particular matter before okay. we start. Sorry to inter interject okay. on that particular matter. Just a small procedural problem. So the matter's not lifted from the table yet. I know. I've got to lift it. Lift it. So yep. once it's lifted, then the conflict takes place. Okay, yep. Mike, thank you. I'll move we lift the matter. I'd like to um, suspend standing orders for 10 yeah, minutes, let, please. Can we just get it lifted first? And then I'll well, before we lift it, I'd like to suspend standing orders. There's nothing to stand. No, no we, I, I can't yet. Still so, You've got to lift it from the table. I've got to lift okay. it first. <laughs> <laughs> move to Councillor Johnson. Second to Councillor DeBreeze. All those in favour to lift it. Okay, and before we go any further, Councillor Barrett. I'll declare a conflict as uh, highlighted by the CEO in his uh, report, um, and I will exit the chamber. Councillor Wee Smith, you have requested that we suspend. Yeah, standing okay. orders, please, for a few meeting minutes. Meeting procedure. To do it. Yeah. yeah. So suspend the formal meeting procedures. Yeah, for a, Just so we can have minutes. an informal discussion for, yeah, say 15 minutes so we have a second. Yeah. And second to Councillor Boothby. All those in favour that for 15 minutes we suspend? Okay. Hang on. Sorry, Dan. <laughs> Are you have to turn that off? Now, yeah. if, we, no. if we suspend them formally, yeah. what's the power to do? No. Thanks. Because yeah, his conflict is still attached. Yeah. 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 Okay. Can we still do we turn the camera off? Okay. It's confidential, Scott. Right. Not confidential. No. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, Just make sure you say the right thing. <laughs> Councillor Lee Smith. Yeah, I, the reason I wanted to suspend standing orders for this is because I think it's worthy of a conversation. Um, to be fair, I was quite surprised to see this item on the agenda at this meeting um, after the brief discussion we had at the last workshop, and I know not all members were there. Um, but I felt that there was a general agreement at the last workshop that we needed to work on the policy. Now... I understand in both of the recommendations here it looks to work on the policy, but I'm concerned that there's no clear timeframes on that. Um, and my major concern stems from the fact that we've had this discussion, discussion on numerous occasions with numerous other groups in the past and we still haven't worked on the policy. Um, I have real hesitations in making a decision on this particular matter today without having done that work. Personally, I'd prefer to see this lay on the table and, you know, free as any other request for waiver, whatever it may be. That's perfectly reasonable. But I think the work on this policy is really quite critical and we need to get it done. And a time frame of 12 months is not acceptable, in my opinion, nor is not having a time frame on there. Um, I know that there are other policies about the place, about South Australia. Um, I've heard of a few good ones um, from other people that we could be looking at. And I think we really need to make a concerted effort to move on this policy um, rather than sidelining it. Again. Yeah, just, so, uh, so just to clarify, and then the council gave the expectation it would deal with the issue in April, that's why it's here. Okay, I might have missed that, Clive. 
service was in and out. So. Uh, Councillor Boothby, I think you had your hand up. Thanks, Mayor. Um, so I, I apologise I did miss the, the workshops. I have not got that most recent continuity of discussion, but I guess I, where I, I have some concerns around this too in terms of equity of approach. So we have just approved a waiver for a community group that does good work. We're starting to differentiate now between community groups and how much we benefit them, how much we value them. Um, so I think we're getting into some tricky ground there in terms of consistency of approach. As I, as I did, when, the, when this came to the chamber um, last time as well, I think you know, when I worked for council, which is going back 10 years ago, <laughs> this is, we were still talking about this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So part of the challenge with the previous council, my first term of council was as well, and again, this is, please not meant to be, this is a without prejudice comment, hopefully, um, we lacked courage. You know, we actually have to support the staff when we have a policy, it's got to be a sound policy that's reasonable for lessees and licensees, is reasonable for the rest of the community who, as a collective, own these assets, and it has to be a balanced approach. We can't please everybody. So there's not going to be a policy that manages our risk, actually has a, a reasonableness in terms of if you have 100% use of a facility, then you have to pay for that in some way, shape or form. We have to have courage as a council to stand behind the staff as long as the policy is reasonable. So that's what hasn't happened, in my opinion, in my eight years on council, is that we as elected members haven't had the courage to actually help the staff get us the right policy. We have to nail this you know, sooner rather than later. And I agree, 12 months is too long. So it's to, to be fair to groups like this who only exist to do good work that supports council in its work, I just think we're on dangerous ground at the moment. Thank you. Councillor DeVries? Yeah, um, I think 12 months, yeah, it sounds like a long time, but we're going into, again, uh, we're going into a, a caretaker mode uh, in, I think it's August, September. Uh, we would have to nail it before then. I don't think we're going to get this done in that amount of time based on the past. So while I recognise that 12 months seems like a long time, in practical political reality, it's going to take at least that. This is not an easy thing to do as well. Uh, I agree with you. It, it takes courage and it also requires members of the community. And we've spoken about this before, Councillor Boothby, that w I think the best option is that we recognise that there is going to be favouritism based on legacy. And I think the fairest thing, and I think this is what um, Ms Tabak was going to do, was bring to us the work that had been done where we could actually say, OK, this is how much you pay, this is how much you're being subsidised. And so at least then everybody understands, because everybody seems to think that they're contributing a lot and getting very little back. And when you actually cut through all of that, you, it's actually often the people who feel they're being the hardest done by that are often the ones who are getting the greatest benefits. Um, we start to get into issues of who can afford to pay. We start to get into issues of the age of the people and the types of activity. Some groups show up, you know, do their karate and then go home and then there are others actually show up and then they fix the walls and paint the, you know, the windows and actually put value into the facility itself. And so they don't expect to pay the same amount for that, the use of that facility because they're putting in in-kind support rather than just showing up, paying their, their dollars and leaving. So it's a really, really hard thing to get done because apples with apples is not a very easy... It just is almost never an apples with apples comparison. This is why... Um, and I, this, this, when this, this discussion got um, laid on the table, uh, the last time it was actually here... What I wanted to propose at the time, and I'd still like to see if there's a way that we can inject this, is to actually say to this group, look, um, you do have to pay, but then we will give you a rebate for the money that you pay. Therefore, we don't actually go through this process of, of um, having one rule for one group. And we're actually making a deliberate decision to, to, to create a, a separation on this instance. And the reason why I think that is, is useful is because symbolically, in practical terms, it's the same amount of money in and out. Symbolically, it's actually saying we recognise the value that you're putting into it because what are they actually creating? They're actually putting on these dinners to raise money to support the hall itself. And so to then say, oh, but you have to pay to use the hall to raise money to support the hall seems kind of crazy. But to get around the problem of then having one, you know, because we talked about consistency a couple of council terms ago and then we've seemed to suddenly start to 
ignore that. This would be a way to get around that problem of creating um, a precedent by actually saying, okay, we recognise that you're raising money, we can't let you off paying for the hall because if we do that, then we're going to have to start doing that to everybody, although we just passed one that we did that mm -hmm. to. But um, given that, um, we will give you back that money so you're not out of pocket. In other words, we'll, we'll, we will refund it to you. It's the same money in and out. Anyway, it's, we're going to end up with the same amount of cash. They're going to end up doing the same amount of work. But under, if we do that, at least they will be happy. And at this stage, I think creating policy to make a user group happy and feel satisfied and feel like their, their contributions are being honoured and that we actually give a damn about what they're doing. Maybe it's symbolic. Maybe that's all that it is. But I think it's still sometimes symbolism does matter and it can help. So my view would be that we actually, <laughs> for this particular instance, say, no, we will, we will require you to pay the fee, but we will then give you a... A ref we will basically refund that feedback to you. Money in, money out, everybody should be happy. That, that's my view. Otherwise, I'll be going with recommendation too. Yeah, I'll just, I'll, I'll just go around first and then I'll come back because you've spoken earlier. Um, it's informal. Councillor Hay, Councillor Truth, and then. Mayor, I'm in the position where I don't want to vote today. I don't think we've got anything really to vote for. We need a policy. That needs to come in time, but not in 12 months, as has been discussed. It's too far away, but we do need something to vote on. We need a policy. Um, and that's what we were asking for. And we haven't got that yet. So where to from here? Maybe another workshop to get the policy up or some information to come back to us, which I believe is going to come back to us. We haven't seen. So there's been a lot. In the last meeting we had... We were told there'd been a lot of work done on this uh, some time back, and that was going to be forwarded to us. So I'd like to see that, and that might be a start. So that, so that will come back, but we needed to deal with the application. Yeah, this is dealing with the application. This is just dealing with what we're doing, uh, and that will come back. Yeah. Yeah. I think what Councillor Deveries has said has got merit. Yeah, and people do put a lot of effort into buildings and whatever council own, and I think they should be uh, um, recognised for that. And over at Mount Pleasant, they've done that. Now we get over that, it's another matter, but yeah, charging, refund the money at some stage, and say good work, it was a Christmas present. Um, and other groups could do that as well. So I have a personal feeling that we should be also looking at the non-profit organisations and they should be looked at separately. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Are you Councillor True? Yeah. Um, I obviously have, uh, like Councillor Booth, been um, advocating for some sort of consistency and I do understand that we need to make a definite decision today. Um, but I'm a user um, in Port Adelaide Enfield of... Um, different um, uh, halls and hiring systems and I have seen other councils and how they deal with this and everything that we've been talking about today um, has been thrashed out by other staff members and other councils. So, I mean, even I'm just reading on their PDF, registered charities, regi registered charities where monies are for council benefit, uh, council partnership agreements, existing senior citizen groups are all free under their Category 5. We can do this. We need to be brave, like um, Councillor Boothby says. I think we need to definitely bring something back and do something consistent that people know why we do it. We need to be brave. I do agree with Councillor DeVries that we need to come up with a solution today and maybe that's that kind of agreement that we give back to you what you've given to us. So um, that's just my comment, again, reiterating that. So, um yeah, Councillor Johnston, and I'll just remind you, we've only got three minutes to... And I'll, I'll, I'll come back brief. to you, I'll Councillor Weiss. Yeah. I'll, I'll be brief. We were given a spreadsheet at the workshop that clearly showed that there are a number of groups in Mount Pleasant who get access to facilities for a peppercorn rental of a dollar a year. Mm -hmm. And so the problem when you're trying to implement consistency is that they will be losers because they may well end up having to pay a licensing fee that they've never paid. And that's when the whole thing starts to become 
sort of like an acrimonious debate because there will be winners and losers in this particular thing. I support what you're suggesting because um, a number of these groups are not registered charities. They're not for profits, but they're not registered charities, and that's a whole other animal. This thing that we've just supported is not a registered charity, but it is in effect doing charitable work where it's not making a profit. Not for profits make a profit. It just can't be redistributed on the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, I, I agree with all the comments that have been made, but I, I don't really want to make a decision today. Um, so which part do we leave out and what do we include? Um, so it, it is a bit tricky, and, and I agree with the refund that Councillor De Vries uh, said, that if we can do that, whether that's legal or not, I don't know. But there are all these questions that we need to ask, and, and uh, I would just like to have a little more time. Councillor yeah, no, no. Lee Smith. I, I think there's some really good comments that have been made so far, and I think this illustrates how much work we need to do on this. You know, rebate, that sounds fantastic. Um, my concern and my frustration at the moment is this keeps being sidelined and put, you know, Councillor Boothby's just said it's been going on her whole eight years on council. We've only got until November left here. I don't want to see this shelved, and it won't be dealt with. The next council will, you know, sit there maybe for three or four years before they go, hey, we need to do something about this again. We've talked about this same issue. I don't know how many times in my last three and a half years, whatever it is, um, I want to see us actually acting on it. I, too, don't feel comfortable voting today, but if we have to, um, I think recommendation two is the best, but I'm not comfortable with the 12-month time frame. I want to see us moving on this sooner than that. And if there's work that's already been done, there's no reason why that can't be brought to us and we can't why we can't start workshopping it already. So, again, my, my frustration is that I can see what's going to happen here. It's going to be pushed to the side. It won't be dealt with, and it won't be dealt with in our time on council. And I want to make sure that we're actually getting stuff done. I won't use the word I was going to use. <laughs> Thank you. Mm. I reckon just just a matter of point, yes, it's legal, but at the end of the day, all we're doing is creating admin. So we'll, we'll send them an invoice, they'll pay us, then we'll send them a credit note, and then we'll refund the money. If we get our policy, it's significantly less work than fighting with them for the next six months. We we'll just refund. Just give it, wave it for 12 months. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's do that. Let's do that. <laughs> We're getting bogged down in two arguments. You just need to yeah. answer. I'm just question. trying to avoid a precedent, and I think that will save well, us work in the long run. But anyway, yeah, still in, do you, you want to have everyone knocking on the door? Well, we've got Fair precedents enough. anywhere. We made the coaches pay their money. Exactly. Yep. And yeah, then, that's right. I didn't agree with that either. No. <laughs> and again, here we are again. Just a word. Just a word. Hang on. Just one quick one, if we can, otherwise we'll do it in debate. Yeah, I'll do it in debate. We'll, we'll, We'll resume because the 15 minutes is up. So we'll resume formal procedures. Questions? Yep. So, um, again, about eight years ago, uh, we did a um, redefining community committees project that I know quite well. Um, and we, talk, you know, we, we talked about this, that to Councillor Habig's point about incorporate associations. So I'm doing some work with Mount Barker Council at the moment as a consultant, separate hat. Um, and they have, you know, community groups that are assigned. This is the asset that you're actually managing. And I know it goes back to the Section 41 in terms of function, but different form. So that was the point about that, that project of actually saying, okay, if, if the Mount Pleasant Progress Association actually wants to, is, is happy to take ownership in terms of management and, you know, administration for that particular building, then they then, you know, um, they receive the, the um, lease and licence fees, but they also agreed to take out a certain amount of maintenance and responsibility, understanding that council still has the ultimate responsibility for risk, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that's part of why I know uh, Ms Tabbitt has been working on as part of that program for the last eight years as well. But we can, again, as a council, we can support that by actually having some in principle support for things to actually occur, which is be happy to divest ourselves of management and administration of a particular building like that if, it's a, if it is a better result for the community and for us to, to do that. And I don't know that we've done that. As part of the conversation we have around the lease licence policy moving forward, if we can have that part of the conversation as well, I think that would be helpful. I really would like to get a, a motion that we can then... We have a motion that's been lifted. Um, we haven't got a motion. No, you've got to choose one of those. Yeah. 
I, hang on, didn't we lift a motion no, off we, the table? We can, we can we lift the matter off the table. Right. Okay, thank you. Through you, Mr Mayor, this is the, the best of, a, of what we could do. Because technically when we laid the matter on the table, there was no resolution because the resolution that was put up wasn't seconded. Oh, okay, sorry. So I, th I thought we were... Procedurally, we actually laid nothing on the table. Mm -hmm. So there is nothing on the table. Mm -hmm. and, and respectfully, while I've got the floor through you, Mr Mayor, maybe, perhaps it could be just as simple as we waive for 12 months because we will bring all that data back to you very quickly. That's the easy right. way. Who wants to move uh, that Councillor Wee Smith, you wanting to put a motion on the lease? Yes. I'm happy to move recommendation two, but I'd just like us to workshop it a little bit to ensure that we are getting some work done sooner rather than later. I don't want to see this put to the side for 12 months. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see something come back to a workshop sooner than that. As I said, if there's been work that's already been done, um, so we need to get started on this. We'll, we'll give you what we've got in the April workshop. We'll just do a long April workshop, that's all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We include a waiver we'll for 12 wait, months. I, have to wait. Motion, I want to make an amendment, but I'd love to wait for that to be seconded. Yeah, okay. So, Councillor Wee Smith, you're, you're moving a motion. A recommendation two? Recommendation two, yeah. And so praising. Uh, are we talking issuing months or issuing 12 months? In this recommendation, sure. on suing, so there's a typo in there. It's not yeah, like six months. Yeah, I think six months is more appropriate. So, so on suing, six months. Six so months. Okay. Typo. May can we include in there that we, as the um, CEO said, that we let's can... let's let Councillor Weeks move her motion. And so I'll move that motion there. because obviously then we're letting the group know that um, their fees are due now, but pending what happens with the policy, the discussions we do around that. Um, their fees may be waived or we'll provide a rebate once we've had this discussion. So we have effectively made a decision today, um, but we're also making a decision later, letting go of that. Happy to second that. Seconded. Seconded by Councillor Boothby. And I think you've already probably spoken to it. Oh, I mean, yeah, just to, as I said, so I've explained there, I think this is a happy not necessarily happy compromise, but it's a good compromise um, because we aren't leaving this matter in limbo in terms of what we're expecting from the group. We're asking them to pay, um, but we're letting them know quite clearly that we're working on this and when we do reach a decision, um, if they're eligible for a waiver or for a rebate, we'll make sure that they get that one there. Um, and I do hope that we can get this work done sooner rather than later. As I said, it's been going on for too long. A decade is way too long um, to get something like this sorted. There are so many communities groups um, and other user groups that are going to benefit or otherwise from this and you know the frustrations they have this is something that we can do that actually will help the lives of everyday ratepayers it's, it's not building an oval it's you know making sure that a sewing group can go and meet somewhere um, so yeah I, I think this sort of work is really important and it's what we as a council should be looking at more often. Councillor Boothby. Thank you and um, um, as I think Council always been said earlier as well. There's lots. There, there are so many examples. There are good examples out there of good policies that we can adopt and and um, make our own. Um, and I also, if it is, and it would be reasonable that this is the case, there is staff fatigue with this subject matter, and also challenges in terms of being able to manage relationships and actually come up with a policy at the same time. Then, if we need to look at outsourcing, then let's outsource this, this piece of work to actually get this done quicker. And even if at a minimum, we can actually as agree as a council on some policy principles. Mm -hmm. So I'm here until November and then I'm gone. Mm -hmm. So it's, 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 you know, I'm, I'm just one person that's in that category. So let's actually get some policy principles nailed, if nothing else, before this council mm -hmm. is, 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 is no more. Mm -hmm. Because no matter what happens, as, as again, I think Councillor Smith said as well, in a new council, even if there's a changeover of how many councillors, it's going to take some time to, to you know, get comfortable in the, in the seats and then take you know, things forward. This is a challenging subject matter and we do need to actually get it done. Thank you. CEO? Oh, thanks, Mr Mayor. Just um, need to correct a typographical error. Just stand on my own email app resolution. On the by any interest in the last line, not and interest. Oh, yeah, that one. Second um, thing I'll just, rem uh, we are doing, and it's very easy to bring back what we've done as a starting point for conversation, but just to be mindful also that 
internally where they're doing a significant amount of work in restructuring how we do facilities, leases, licenses, etc. that's Nelly ready. Um, and um, we think it's more administrative, um, but it will feed into that resourcing base and how we manage whatever the policy position is going forward. Thank you. Thank you Councillor DeVries. I have a question for the CEO, um, and I, I may want to move an amendment. Um, at the moment, um, when, when was the fee due for this? Through you, I'm not sure. Do you know the date? Mm, it was actually it's a couple of years worth. Um, la early last year was when the first invoice was. Um, so they're, they're, they're not willing to pay? They're not paying, no, no, no. Okay. Didn't so, say four years of wages. So what we are doing, this is the question of the CEO, so what we're doing with this recommendation is we're, what, turning a blind eye? What, what I mean, the staff have been... The reason this came to us was because the staff wanted us to give support, which we all committed to on Zoom or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, back in, I think it was November... Um, that we would support the staff chasing down things like this and, and getting people to pay. Um, that So are the staff, as a result of us moving this motion, then going to have to go in hard and say, look, you really do have to pay this, but we may give you a waiver or a fee reduction in six months' time? Is that what we're actually... Is that the intent of this wording? No, the intent's the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. So explain that. I don't get it. Well, the intent is that fees and charges will be due and we'll review them under the new policy. But they're already overdue. So what are we going to do about the ones that... September. What this is saying is they'll need to pay whatever's due. Yeah. Right now. Well, within a reasonable time frame. Yeah. And I'm not going to instigate any interest or debt collection activity. No, I, I, that bit I got. So we are not letting them off. We're basically saying we may give you a rebate in six months' time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and I'm happy to call them and talk to them. If that's an issue. Okay, so that's that's the motion we've got. It's been moved sure. and seconded. Can, uh, one more question, if I may. Um, if we, after a workshop, decide that we're happy to give them that rebate and bring that rebate forward, we can do that at any time. Okay. We don't have to. This wouldn't preclude us from doing that. No. Nope. All right. Given that the alternative is not going to get through anyway, I'll let it go. All right. Two. Councillor uh, Thanks, Mayor. Um, in the first part of the, on page 179, there's approximately four years' worth of facility usage without charge, and yet we hear that there's an invoice that's dating back 12 months. So is that five years? Or is it four years? What is it? So if it is, it, it should be only as of today. We shouldn't be charging them from 12 months ago. So I don't really understand that part of the motion. Through you, Mayor. Through you, Mayor. Um... They have been charged for usage over the years, but they haven't actually paid for that okay. usage. So, um, and in the past, I guess when the conversation has come up again and when this started in more recent times uh, was when they requested some uh, change in charges due to not being able to use the hall because of COVID um, and a reduction, which we did because we had a policy position on that already. Um, so changes were made to the charges for the last 12 months last year to reflect the non-usage of the hall during that time. Um, and so those invoices were changed and sent back out and then the further conversations now happen around not paying for any of that at all. Mm. So. Thank you. Any further comments, sure. questions? We have the uh, recommendation too. Can we um, have it reread to us, please? Yeah, we'll put it up. Yes. Yeah, we'll put it up. Thank you. While we're uh, waiting, um, a question for the CEO, if I may, Your Worship. Um, this was allowed to lay on the table without being seconded. Is that even possible? Can you do that? Technically, the answer that's no. <laughs> no. <laughs> it was moving 
if everybody remembers that one, it was an interesting debate. Yeah, and I missed it. How, how could we have even had a debate without a seconder? You, we did have You weren't. You were having a whole pile of conversation. Then there was a mover of a motion with no seconder, and then it immediately laid on the table. I don't think you get in there quick enough to say, what are you leading with? Okay. That's why I'm never a fan of that. <laughs> Always in the I'm list. normally quick enough to pick it up. Yeah. Must have been one of my off days. It's still a typo. It's not fatal. No, no. Because there's just, nothing on yeah, there. Yeah, no, I was just surprised by insuring. On suing, six months, not insuring. Second line, line. Yeah, insuring. And a comma. In so, what do you want to do? Insuring. Good luck. Spell check, don't you? Spell check. Clearly. Should be a possessive comment, uh, comma in positions on that same line. Okay. Question. Question, Mayor. Uh, what happens to the last four years? If, if, uh, Whatever is due no, and yes. So if no. what happens if they don't pay for it? Because of all the things all that they've done, and because of all the Positions. Previous motions that we did today yeah. with a group, they're what putting stuff back. Well, normally I shut my mouth. But if, you know, you, if you read, if you read them together, it logically does no damage because I won't be pursuing anything even if they don't pay. Yeah, we'll drift. Yeah. So we will ask them to pay, but if they don't pay, we'll sort out the policy and go from there. Okay, and it seems as though they won't because it hasn't happened in four years. So I'm just wondering whether we, I agree with what's happening, but um, you know they're pretty stubborn in their own way. So that's what I'm trying yeah, to. Anyway, we've got this motion before you now. So well, that was related. Yeah, yep. but I think the, I think the CEO's asked the question. Yeah, okay, thanks, CEO. Just a question. Any further comment now, um, Councillor Weiss? Any more? Just a quick question. Just is it would the staff be uncomfortable about uh, actually um, communicating this to the uh, stakeholders, or do they need our support in that? We'll communicate everything. Right. Right. Yep. Any other decision? Yep. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. I think there's a more tougher communication in those resolutions today than this one. Yep. <laughs> Councillor Lee Smith, you want to close the debate? Yeah, I mean, I think I've said everything I wanted to say several times. Um, as I said, I don't necessarily want to make a decision on this today, but we need to provide staff with some direction. Um, but I do really want to make sure that we get cracking on this policy and get something in black and white before November. Um, because you know, if this comes up again in four years because it still hasn't been dealt with, whether I'm here or not, it's going to be particularly frustrating. As I'm sure it has been for Councillor Booth B over her time. <laughs> Thank you. Put the motion. All those in favour? Carried unanimously. Thank you. But Councillor Barrett can the return. Trouble is that the very people that we want to protect are the ones who are going to get clobbered by this. The quilters, for a start. That's why we won't do it. We'll talk about it, but we won't do it. No, we, we won't, because you'll be well, hurting all the people. Sort of playing a yeah. You'll we'll hurt every me. person you hurt will be the ones you want to help the most. Excuse me, we'll just move on. Uh, two, 295. Yep. <coughs> yeah, we've got to block it. Councillor Barrett, the um, second option was uh, moved with an amendment that we'll deal with this within six months' time with a proper policy. And, uh, we'll... Thank you. Um, next item is the Stockwell Recreational Park Internal Road Reconstruction 7.6.1. This is for Council to consider a budget adjustment and allocate additional capital funds to undertake Restructuring works on the Stockwell Recreational Internal 
Road Network. Move the motion there. Yeah, I'll second that. Moved Councillor Habeck and second Councillor Hearn. Councillor Habeck. Just want to speak briefly. Councillor Schilling and I have a lot to do with the stock wheel. And there's a lot going on up there at the moment. There's huge increase in the vehicle traffic and pedestrian traffic due to the modifications that have been done up there. The entrance road and the car park is in deplorable condition. And you just, just about need a four-wheel drive to get around up there. So this has been long overdue. And uh, I think the money will be worth spent. Thank you. Councillor Hearn? No, I just endorse the comments of Councillor Hobie. Any other comments, questions? I'd just like to make a brief comment that uh, I agree that this is a, uh, a worthwhile project, but I also want to highlight that, in my opinion, we should be reviewing and having a post-construction review on all of our, um, some of our recent roadworks, particularly Trial Hill Road and Stockwell Road, so that we can see that we are getting good value for money. So I would throw that out that I am very keen to make sure that we're delivering our projects in a very sound financial way in the future. So I'll be doing a bit of a deep dive on those two projects. Good. Good. Anyone? Um, I'll put the motion. All those on the stock wheel. Carried unanimously. Thank you. The 7.6.2, page 298, proposed road closure yeah. for the 2022 Anzac Day Parade to Nunda. Yeah, the... Councillor Louise Smith moved. Second. Seconded. Yeah, <laughs> Councillor Troop. Either one wish to speak to it. Thank you. I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Carry. Now, 7.6.3, which is uh, 301, the proposed road closure for the Brossa District Pipe Band 10th celebration. I think there's a little bit of an error in the uh, recommendations that someone might want to tease out for me while I get to the page. The end and the or. <laughs> move, the, move the recommendation, but with the correction of the decline to sponsor the road closure event on item four. Delete so, item four. Yes. Yeah, because yeah, it, it seems hang to. Hang on a minute. That was just a second. Previous mayor say so point three, full stop, remove four. Yeah. Yes. 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 You okay with that, Councillor DeVries? Yeah, full, full stop. we spoke about this. And, yeah, yeah there's right. obviously a, a there was a typo somewhere or a, a mixed signal somewhere, but yeah, the intent is to support it clearly. Yeah, and uh, seconded, Councillor Johnston. Do you wish to say anything further? Um, I'm trying to go back to when this was first proposed. I think it was uh, Councillor Pullen was the the one who brought this uh, this event first to the Brosser. It's been uh, terrific idea. It was the idea to sort of w widen um, the bands beyond just the, the pipe band, uh, sorry, the umpa um, style um, brass to include pipe bands. Um, and it's been very successful and very popular and broadened the diversity of the valley. So I hope everybody supports it. Thank you. So your name's Stuart, my last name's Johnston, I rest. <laughs> All those in favour? Carried. I guess the Anguses will be happy with it too. <laughs> 7.6.4, the uh, 2022 Barossa Marathon uh, Festival road closure request on page 304. Mm. Move the recommendation there. Move Councillor Angus. Second to Councillor DeVries. Any comments? Oh, 
comments, questions? I bought one of these and I threw up. It was <laughs> <laughs> too much detail. All those in favour? Carried. Uh, development and Environmental Services on page 308, which is the appointment of an elected member and a deputy elected member to the, and I think we're going to call this the Barossa Assessment Panel. Uh, Council Assessment Panel is the, is the correct term under the legislation. The term Barossa Assessment Panel is under the terms of reference. So we'll make that correction. No, you don't, you don't need to. Oh, we don't. Okay, thanks. All right. I'm clear. 308, I think I'm clear. Mayor, I'll uh, nominate Councillor Johnston okay. again as the uh, elected, mayor, elected member representative, and I'd be looking for a, a volunteer for the deputy. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to be the same. Perhaps, uh, Councillor Angus, would you like to No, be thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Well, you I might have a volunteer. I'll put my hand up there as a volunteer. Thank you. Councillor Habig, so Count Councillor Angus, you are happy to move Councillor Johnston and Councillor yes. Habig as the deputy. And I'll second that. And seconded Councillor Wees. Smith. Sorry. We need to. <laughs> <laughs> My grandfather has a banging problem. <laughs> we have a conflict of interest now. What? Is there a conflict of interest now? Mm. They don't get paid. You don't get money. No. Okay. I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Carry. No. <laughs> <laughs> you said you're a volunteer. Yeah, yeah, I, I thought there was something I didn't know. You just waved it. Page 318. The uh, Gawler River Flood Management Authority. Notice of annual business plan and draft budget 2022-2023. 7.7.2. I'll move the recommendation now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Second you, it. Councillor Boothby. Why not? <laughs> Second. Second and Councillor Troop. I, I'd just like to make a comment and acknowledge the significant reduction in our fees for the year of $955. Good to see we're saving some money. <sighs> yeah. Thank you. Um, do we you wish to speak? Second it? No. All those in favour? Carried. I hate to uh, disappoint you, Councillor Weeks, but it's only a draft one that I think it is. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, but at, at this point in time, we've got an extra grant in the bank. Um, 7.7.3 on page 343 is the consideration and adoption of committee resolutions, Barossa Bush Gardens. Page 343. I'll move the recommendation. Move Councillor Wee Smith, seconded Councillor Barrett. Either one wish to speak? Any comments? <coughs> All those in favour? Carried. Uh, members, we now move into a confidential item, which is um, the we go road into extension, road. private road legal advice. Three, five, two. We need a, a mover. Move Councillor Debreeze and seconded Councillor Wee Smith. We go into confidence.
Reminded that those that we would gather for a little luncheon, those that have indicated for Richard, at what time? Well, I'll close the meeting first. Of all. <laughs> okay, no other urgent business. Next meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, the 19th of April 2022, at 9 a.m. With that, I'll formally close the March meeting. Um,